Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to talk about a seemingly mundane topic and that is null checking in C-sharp. Now, when I say it is a bit of a mess, well, I do kind of mean that, but that's not because C-sharp is a bad language, but rather because it's an old language where features are just being additive and they don't change any existing behavior because they would break people, which kind of leads to features overlapping each other, but also clashing with each other. And there are some things in this video I'm going to show you that you probably do not expect. And if your null check is looking like this, for example, well, that's not necessarily the way you should be doing null checks. Just stay tuned and I'm going to explain everything. Trust me, you're going to learn something, even if the topic seems basic. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. And for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a very simple console application. I have this user class over here with this a full name property, a constructor, and then just a child user property. And then I have this program.cs, and I'm just going to explain quickly what this is doing. I have a seeded randomizer with a random value in here, which basically says that every time you run this program, generate the same sequence of randomness, which basically allows me to control whether something is null or not based on this randomizer. For example, I know that the first time this is invoked, it's going to return seven, which is more than three. So this will actually return null. And obviously the easiest and simplest way you might be doing null checks in C sharp, which is probably wrong, depending on what you're trying to do is this. You can say if user is null, right? That's what we've been taught to use for years now. Then you can say console.write line user was null. And you can have the opposite as well. So I'm going to add an else check over here and user was not null. Now, like I said, I know that the first time I run this, this will actually return seven. So if I do in fact run it, it's going to say user was null because the check will go into this branch and this is where we're falling through. Let me just quickly debug it so you can see exactly what is happening. So user null, every time I run this, this user will be null. Now, let me make something very, very clear because you don't only have the equals operator here, you also have the dot equals method over here. If you try to do something like that, you will actually get a null reference exception because this value is null equals is a method on that null value. So it does not really work the same. But the reason why I raise it is because if you go into the equals method, you will see that behind the scenes, this is calling the equals operator by default. However, this is where this gets very, very tricky. And why I'm saying that you might be doing null checks wrong if you're doing them like this. What are you trying to check here? You're trying to check that the reference of the user is null. If you are using something like Unity, the game engine, then what I'm going to talk about now does not apply to you because of how the equals operator is overloaded. But in C Sharp in general, if you're trying to check that the reference of this parameter is null, then this is not the best way to do that. In fact, let me show you, I'm going to add a breakpoint here and I'm going to debug it. And I'm just going to run it again. Like we mentioned, this is null, so this check should succeed, right? So let me just step over this. Oh, it goes to the else and says user is not null. But how is the user not null if it is null? Well, that's because the equals operator can be overloaded and off camera, I did overload it. So I'm just returning false. And this is just an example. It can return anything. So depending on how you handle the left and the right parameter, that thing can just be changed to whatever you want. And it's the same with the equals uh, method. If you just say equals whatever and you override this, then you don't have the default behavior. So what are you trying to check? Are you trying to check that the reference is equal or something else? Like I said, if you're using Unity the game engine, this is by default overloaded. You should not do what I'm going to show in this video. But if you're checking for the reference to be null, then the simplest way or the sort of the default way we had for years now is the following. You can say reference equals and then have your two parameters. And that, even if you have an overloaded equals operator, will actually override that behavior because it really just checks truly the reference. Now, here's how this gets very, very interesting. If I go into the reference equals method, you're going to see that what's happening here is just the use of the equals operator, but I actually overloaded it. So how do we have still the equals operator, but we have a proper reference check? Well, that's because these parameters are actually being passed as objects, as nullable objects, which means that effectively what you're doing is this. You are taking this and you're saying hard cast it into a nullable object and say user equals null. And now, even though I am using the equals operator, because I'm doing this 
casting thing, it won't actually go into the operator behind the scenes, the overloaded one, this one, I'm just going to put a breakpoint to prove you that it won't do that. And if I just step over it, it ignores all that and goes in here because that's what the reference equals will actually do behind the scenes. Confused yet? That's why I'm saying it can't actually be a bit of a mess because you have all these different ways to interact with nullability. However, since we got proper pattern matching in C Sharp, this hasn't really been an issue. And it has been an issue because the proper or good way to do null checking, if what you're trying to do is actually check whether the reference is null and the basically the standard now for null checking is this, user is null. That's how you should be writing your null checks. And if you scroll into Microsoft's code bases and all the other big code bases, that's how null checking is done. Now, there used to be a difference in performance as well if you actually had a null check like this as opposed to a null check like this. This isn't really so much the case anymore. The compiler has gotten a bit smarter. But if you want to do null checks because you want to check that the reference is null, then that's what you do. And if you do that, and actually I'm going to debug it, you're going to see that the equals operator is again not actually touched. It doesn't go through there. It just completely ignores it and it works the same way as the reference equals. And technically, this is actually exactly the same as the hard casting on the object behind the scenes because if I actually show you the low level C sharp of this over here, as you're going to see, we have the exact same thing. It checks that if the object is hard casted and then null, then it was null. So it will work the same as reference equals or hard casting equals. Now I'm going to say invert this if check, and I'm going to show you how you can have the inverted of basically is null before we received the not keyword. And the way to do that is this. You would say if user is this. And if you did that, then this is a not null check in the same way that is null is the null version of it. So if I just run this, because the user is actually null, it is not an object, it's going to fall through here. And as I step over it, as you're going to see, that's what happened. So for a long time, even Microsoft code bases were using this as the way to check if something is not null. However, with the introduction of C Sharp 9, if I'm not mistaken, we received the not null version. So now if you want to have a not null check, the decent way to do it is actually this, which actually reads pretty, pretty nice. And you would argue that this is very reminiscent of things like Visual Basic and we're going backwards. But I actually like how this reads as opposed to, you know, this, which again, you can actually overload this operator, go in here, and that can also be problematic. So do you want to have a null check then is null? You want to have the opposite of a null check is not null? And that's what you should be doing unless you actually want to go through the operator and null has different meaning, for example, if you're using Unity the game engine. Now, I want to leave you with something you might not actually expect how it really works behind the scenes. Let's increase this to 8, which actually means now that the user does exist. And let's say that I want to check that the full name of the child of the user is not null. How would you write this? Well, let me show you. Given everything we saw, you might think that what you should do is name is not null. Which, you know, fair assumption, but you might also try to do something like this. Say user is, and then use pattern matching, and say child.fullName not null. And that's another way to have that. However, these two are not the same. And it's not the same because this is actually translated like this behind the scenes. So it actually has two extra null checks, one on the user and one on the child here on top of the final null check you're doing. So don't assume that this null check and this null check work the same. Pattern matching will try to be defensive and add extra null checks, even though they're not extremely obvious. So what's the conclusion? Well, if you truly want to check if something is null or not null, that's what you should be doing in modern C Sharp, is null or is not null. Don't try to use the operators. They can be dangerous. But if the operators are actually part of your logic, including the null checks, because you don't actually try to check for null references, but maybe for something not existing, which is what Unity does, then you might not want to use the is or is not for those scenarios. Like I said, it's a bit of a messy situation, but if you understand those rules and everything in this video, you should have everything you need to know to identify any issues and basically focus on using one of the two versions in your applications unless explicitly needed otherwise. But I want to know from you now, what do you think about all these features and effectively all this feature creep now in C Sharp and these different ways of doing so many different things? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.